Well, hello, and thank you for joining us for another Traxo Office Hours webinar. Today's webinar is entitled Effective RFPs in Hotel Spend Management. Now that we're emerging on the other side of the COVID-19 pandemic, many corporate travel managers are taking this time to take a look at their overall programs to make sure they're buttoned up as their travelers begin to get back out on the road. One prominent area of focus has been around spend. And in today's eclectic environment of choice, it's become more difficult for travel managers to rein in that spend. Although corporate travel managers are responsible for keeping track of their company's entire travel spend, as technology continues to evolve, travelers are given more and more options on where they book, making it increasingly challenging for travel managers to optimize the spend on all of their company's bookings, especially when they don't see the bookings. The Beat had a quote in an April 9th article this year that said 40% of 2020 respondent carrier bookings were transa transacted through digital direct channels, such as carrier websites or mobile apps. Corporate travel managers and procurement professionals we've spoken to struggle to answer key questions like, how much are we actually spending on travel? Are our employees using our preferred suppliers or are there other suppliers we should add? Have we tapped into our full savings potential? And how can I be assured that I'm getting the best rates? Fortunately, alongside the plethora of booking choice as technology advances, has been the advancement of supplier technologies to assist the corporate travel manager in getting their arms wrapped around their entire program. Over the next few months, we're going to be giving you insights into some of the technologies and services available to help make your job easier and bring assurance to optimize your organization's travel spend. Today, we're excited to share with you an emerging and becoming quickly popular company in these modern technology solutions, BTP Automation alongside one of your most esteemed peers to share how he uses BTP in his company's environment. Before we jump in, we have just a couple of housekeeping things to run through. For those of you not too familiar with what we do at Traxo, we are the leaders in corporate travel data capture and pre-trip program auditing. Medium and large enterprises use Traxo to eliminate their corporate travel blind spots, also known as booking leakage, by automatically aggregating all corporate travel activity booked through both TMC and non-TMC sources in one place in real time. If you'd like to learn more about how we accomplish this and explore the benefits of being able to receive complete itinerary intelligence in real time from your business travelers, we'll provide an opportunity for you to connect with us at the end of this webinar. The webinars in this series will be focused on price assurance strategies. You will automatically be invited to the subsequent price assurance webinars and receive a free comprehensive price assurance ebook once we're finished with the series. Also. This webinar is being recorded, so you'll be able to view it again if you enjoyed it or would like to share with someone you feel may be interested. To view the recording of this and past webinars, please visit resources.traxo.com. The Q&A feature is open, and this webinar is designed for audience participation through that platform. You have the ability to post your own questions or upvote questions you feel most relevant for the panelists, and I'll be sure to bring them up with the panelists either during or towards the end of the webinar. So without further ado, let's introduce our panelists for today's discussion and jump right in. Fernando is a 35 year veteran of business intelligence, corporate travel data management process and co-founder of the Business Travel Performance Index. Fernando is pioneering an evolution that is changing the travel procurement focus from annual sourcing to strategic program management. Welcome Fernando and thank you for joining us. Thank you, Justin. And Bruce is a 25-year travel industry veteran, having owned and operated a corporate travel management company for 13 years before co-founding Get There with Dan Whaley. Get There built the first web connection to an airline reservation system, had a successful IPO in 1999, and subsequent acquisition by Sabre in 2000. After being introduced to Fernando and the team by Dan, Bruce took the reins and was asked to lead the organization as their CEO. Welcome, Bruce. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks, Justin. Thanks for putting this together. It's exciting. All right, and Francis Chadwick leads the corporate travel team for Sabre in EMEA and in India. Francis began his career with Sabre in 2005 and has held positions of increasing responsibility, starting from in-house agent up to his current travel manager role. Francis has overseen Sabre's managed hotel program globally since 2010, and he streamlined the program for nearly 300 negotiated hotels to approximately 100 today, and consistently delivered less than 1% average year-over-year -year increases in negotiated hotel rates. Welcome, Francis. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Justin. Glad to be with you. All right. So let's just jump in here. So let's start with Fernando. Uh, Fernando, I enjoy hearing the story about how you came up with the concept of BTP automation. Could you tell us how BTP automation was created and the heart and purpose behind it? 
Yes, Justin, thank you very much. Well, back in the late 90s, I started making hotel programs uh, for companies all over the world, small companies, mid-sized companies, large companies. And of course, there was no internet. There was not a lot of elements that we have today. So uh, capturing data, collecting data was a major challenge, more so in different areas in the world. It was easier somewhere and more difficult somewhere else, right? So not only that, collecting the data was a challenge. Then once you have the data in your hands, uh, the biggest challenge was to normalize the data and find the right elements that you needed to make the right decisions. So we started learning which elements, data elements, were the ones that were really triggering decisions, the right decisions, and uh, making sure that the corrective actions were the right corrective actions and were corrected at the end of the day. So after 2,000 hotel programs that we put together all over the world, uh, in the Orient, South America, North America, Europe, everywhere, uh, we learn a lot about collecting data and managing data. However, we kept on managing hundreds, tens of reports to make a single decision. It was just, okay, how much are we saving here? How much are we saving there? How much can we save for next year? The most important thing, the, the directory of hotels, you know, the, the big list, the, the uh, big list that is very important every year. So making all that, we started thinking, how can we make it easier for us specifically to see the performance of a hotel program instead of looking at 10 different reports, 20 different reports. So that's when we started thinking about a single number, an index. So we came up with the index. An index can give us one single number, the performance of our hotel program. But then not only that, we started thinking about, we cannot just do this once a year or once a quarter. We have to do this daily because we started looking at uh, the performance of the travel changing every day, every week, depending on the market conditions. And there were very different market conditions in different places in the world. Emergencies here, emergencies there, closings here, closings there, more travel here, more travel there. So we thought about, okay, the hotel program cannot be done once a year. It has to be modified every time it has to be modified. Either it's once a day, once a week, whenever it's necessary, renegotiate rates, all those kind of things. So all of that performance, all of that experience came to our minds and said, okay, let's make one single number the performance element, the performance measure of a hotel program. And then let's make the movers. What is moving this number up or down? And the number is basically the, the percentage of savings capture as a, as a percentage of the total potential savings on a daily basis. And the movers are basically what is moving this number up? What is me moving this number down? And what are the corrective actions to keep it up? That's how we came to our minds. Yeah, and it sounds to me like um, your clients can either get as involved and as uh, uh, granular as they like, or you've provided the opportunity to take such complex data sets and, and bring them down into one specific goal to make things a little bit easier uh, to sum up. Exactly. Does that sound about right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, and if there's anything that changes on a constant basis, daily or even hourly, it's definitely the corporate travel industry, and especially in today's oh, environment. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so, all right. Well, thank you for that, uh, Bruce. So, you yeah, have an extensive right. history within corporate travel and could be doing many things. Yet, you've signed on board to be at the helm with Fernando and BTP. How did you get connected and what made you decide to step into your current role? You're on mute, Bruce. <laughs> yep. That's a, that's a good question. Um, in fact, I ask myself that sometimes daily. <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> You know, I after after exiting um, get there, uh, spent a bunch of time getting reacquainted with my family and my kids, which I hadn't seen in years. Um, and I was kind of perfectly happy doing my own thing until Dan Whaley, who was a you know my co-founder at Get There, came to me and said, "Hey, I, I'm working with a company. I think you really need to take a look at it. It's in the travel tech space. It's something I'm familiar with and something that I understand." and you know, I joined the company as an advisor initially, um, and the more I became familiar with BTP, the more interesting it became, and the more I saw the opportunity to solve these, what we consider to be big issues in the industry. Um, and I became more operationally involved on a day-to-day -day basis until the board came to me and said, Hey, we'd like you to run the show. Uh, and I, my initial response was, I think I better talk to my wife first because I've been in a startup and I know what that means. Uh, but having joined last November and seeing the progress we've made and the 
kind of the overall benefit that B2B provides for really all entities in the kind of value chain from the buyer, the supplier, and a TMC, um, it's become more and more exciting on a daily basis. And I'm really happy to be here and glad that I joined. Great. Thanks for that background. Um, so yeah. digging into the meat and, uh, you know, there are probably a few people in the audience that uh, really aren't familiar with what BTP is, what you do, uh, you know, how it all works. So, you know, uh, this is a question for Fernando and Bruce, whoever wants to take this. Uh, so in your own words, could you describe BTP Automotion and tell us how the BTP index works? Yeah. Fernando, you want me to take this quickly? I, you know, just yeah. to kind of encapsulate it for you. First of all, it's important to understand that BTP is a data, data analytics and what we call RPA, which is robotic process automation. So, you know, automating processes that are currently being done by people uh, and, you know, generally relatively expensive labor. So what we do in a nutshell is we take multiple data streams that uh, comes from the GDS. Uh, you know, we use Sabre Amadeus, Travel Port World Span, whether the, we take data from expense management systems, Concur, Chrome River, KDS, we're, we're agnostic. Um, we'll take third-party tech. We work with Traxo, which for us is a, is a great thing because it adds a level of visibility to, to everything. So we take all the data that we can, we run it through our analytics engine, and that manifests itself in a set of corrective actions, but also in an at-a-glance view of your travel program performance, hotel travel program performance on a daily basis. And then those corrective actions that are generated out of that analytics and that analysis of your program, we have added the automation piece to that. So that's kind of where this really gets exciting is, you know, not only in being able to see the status of your program on a daily basis, just at a glance through a single number, like Fernando was referring to, where your, you know, your index rating is 40%, 80%, 70%, just on a daily basis. So you can see how you're performing against your program. But then let's say, for example, the, the corrective actions that are generated from that are send out 10 RFPs or you know, or 40 RFPs or renegotiate an existing rate. You know, most travel managers, if you tell them today with everything else that's on their plate, hey, in order to do a better job and continuously source a more productive or performing program, you're going to have to send out all these RFPs. I think most of them would just slam the door on us and say, yeah, <laughs> I don't have time to do that. So we automated the RFP. Well, wait a minute. I, I thought hotel RFPs were the favorite task of travel managers, no? That's, yeah, that's not their favorite thing to do? Finding that's not the case. Uh, <laughs> I thought so too. Well, we'll but, check uh, with Francis yeah. just to confirm. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we it, it is not <laughs> 100%. Um, so now we've automated the RFP process mm -hmm. so that once a client, a corporation, establishes their parameters for what are their, you know, prerequisites for adding a hotel into their program, whether that's, whether it's popular, they're staying there a lot, whether they're, um, whether they can get a better negotiated rate there and they know they've been sending a lot of people to a specific destination. So there's a volume threshold that they're meeting. We can set all that on the front end so that the RFP is generated automatically. It's delivered to the appropriate party at a property comes back and we can do a virtual electronic handshake, load the rate, put the hotel in the program, and the travel manager could have been out by the pool having a margarita and the whole thing happens automated fashion. So that's that's where we see huge benefit specifically for the travel managers is in kind of unburdening them of the drudgery of kind of not only analyzing the data and then figuring out what to do with it, but actually taking the actions after you've analyzed the data and presenting it in a kind of completed way and adding and enhancing their current program. Well, thank you for that explanation. So um, I'm guessing that the travel managers, uh, travel buyers on the in the call today are their wheels are spinning as they're thinking through uh, the machine learning, the automation that BTP could bring to their environment. Um, 
unless they're like me and I kind of lost my train of thought because now I'm thinking I want to sit by a pool and drink a margarita. Um, but you know, aside from that, uh, oh, Francis, yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Francis, I, I just want to say again, thank you for joining us. Um, I can say on behalf of, uh, Traxo and BTP, um, you know, we really appreciate that. You are what's represented by most of the audience here today, and I'm sure they're curious to know. So uh, I can imagine uh, the blur projects and activity that you're in the middle of at Sabre. Um, but what was it about BTP that had you and the team pause to want to take a further look and ultimately decide to move forward with them? Yeah, so there were three main reasons why we entered into this partnership. Uh, one was the, the visibility into our expense data, which really wasn't something we had good visibility of before and then not just the visibility but also that ability to integrate and combine that data with the GDS data which obviously we already have seeing it all in one package really makes it more impactful. Uh, second was the continuous sourcing aspect um, we've always done the the annual RFP sourcing which obviously is a pain point for for most that do that. Um, and it was really enticing um, to be able to manage the sourcing on an ongoing basis in a, in a near real time, to be able to say, oh, I've got production at this hotel. Um, we need to go out and get, and get a rate with them or to know that your rate actually that you've negotiated, even though you thought you were getting a good deal because it wasn't a huge increase from last year, actually isn't that good anymore based on the, the current market rates. And then the third thing was the way of showing the value of the hotel program. Um, being able to use the BTP number, the index, to show that, yeah, we've got a really good program or we've got a way to go, we need to make some improvements. It's, it's been a challenge to show that value in the past. The only sort of real measurement we had was to say, we only had this 1% increase year over year on, on rates, but this is a much better way to show that value and, and really give the health of the program and also even be able to benchmark against other corporations because BTP have that information and can give that benchmarking information. Okay, so I'm going to put BTP on the hot seat now. How are they, how are they doing with this so far? For Sabre. I'm asking you, Francis. <laughs> how is how is BTP oh. performing for you? How how are they performing for us? As in, how are we doing, or how are they doing? How is BTP doing? Since you've decided to move forward, how are they doing? Yeah. Oh, they they're doing a they're doing a good job. So we we've got a we've got a way to go with um, with improving our program in terms of the number. It's difficult, obviously, right now in in pandemic COVID times to get a really good handle because. We just don't have a lot of volume right now, but right. we have really good work with them um, in terms of customizing the program, showing exactly what it is that we want to show, making sure all the data is accurate. So I'm very confident that this partnership moving forward, once we start to see travel volumes pick up, will be very valuable for us. That's great. Thank you. Um, so I just want to remind the audience and pause and remind the audience that the Q&A feature is open. So as you're thinking through what BTP does um, and the technology that they bring, please feel free to ask whatever questions you have. And I will go ahead and pose that to the panelists. So uh, Bruce, I want to ask you, uh, and I'm, I, I try to put myself in the mind of the travel manager, travel buyer. And as they're listening to this, they're probably thinking about all of the different technologies that they're aware of in this space. So there are a number of technology companies in existence that promote the advancement of a corporate hotel program, uh, you know, whether in sourcing or reshopping or automation as a whole. So what makes BTP similar or what makes BTP different from them? Yeah, it, it, it's a good question. Uh, the, the reason BTP is kind of, I, I feel, carved out of that herd is because of the level of data that we analyze. Right. As far as we know right now, we're the only company that is not only taking, a, say, a Traxo feed, an expense management feed, a GDS feed, in a case in some TMCs, their mid office data feed, aggregating all that and doing a deep dive into a continuous sourcing program in order to 
not just, you know, kind of a point of sale rebook where you're finding value in a, in a lower rate somewhere, but getting our arms around the entire program and helping curate and manage a program moving forward. So there's, there's the pre-trip data, right, that gives us the ability to make a corrective action on the front end that's actually going to save companies money before somebody travels. There's the post-trip data, which allows us to analyze the current performance and then make recommendations moving forward. And then there's the automation piece, which is so big in that it, like Fernando was saying earlier, you know, one of the things that we do when we launch a corporation, first of all, we look at their 2019, their 2020, and their 2021 historical data. We analyze all that so that we can understand not only where they were, but where they're headed with their program. And then we provide the, the curated kind of bid list for moving forward. So just even in a pilot phase, which is very low friction, there's no cost, we're providing a full analysis of what a company or how a company is currently performing. We're presenting them with a recommended bid list. So the two, three, four months of labor going into, you know, pulling all that data, looking at your hotel program, sending out all those RFPs. We do that basically overnight. We present it to them and then we automate the, you know, generation of all those proposals. So really, you know, when we look at it, we have a very holistic view of the industry. We see big value for a corporation. We see value for the supplier as well, because they get a very nice little streamlined proposal from a corporation. So our response rates are high, our response times are low, and the, and the return of that proposal back to a corporation. And, you know, it's, it's important to note that we do try to take that you know, not to be Pollyannish about it, but there's value for everybody in the chain. And our goal is to provide value, not carve out one just to provide value here. But, you know, again, taking that 360 degree view of the industry and finding out where we can kind of, you know, provide additional value. So I hope I hope that answers your question. But yeah, I mean, I would think so. Um, I appreciate that. And the, and the Q&A is populating. The questions are starting to come in. Um, okay. I do like this one. So uh, this uh, it's an anonymous attendee says, uh, hello, this is super fascinating question. I can see how potential savings percentages can be calculated using static rates. How does this technology work for programs with dynamic fluctuating rates? Whoever would like to take that one. Yeah, Fernando, you wanna jump in? Yeah, of course. Well, basically, uh, on dynamic rates, we check every day the rates that are available for every transaction that we get. So we're basically looking at what the performance of the market is moving also by itself, you know, how the rates are going up, how the rates are going down. And we match everything, basically, the booking and every single booking against what the market is delivering today for any specific date. So we basically have the ability to measure that. Is that answering your question? I would think so. I'll let them uh, let, let us know in the chat if they feel like they'd like to know more of the Q&A. Um, so I, I got a question for pretty much all three of you. Um, and, uh, you know, not to necessarily um, plug us specifically, but the relationship between our organizations is pretty cool. Um, Bruce, I like the way you put it uh, in a recent interview uh, as far as our relationship uh, with BTP. And so I'll let you say it. But what value do, do either of you see uh, in a partnership between Traxo and BTP Automation that could benefit the audience here today? Oh, uh, yeah, that's, that's an easy one for me, Justin. I, you know, <laughs> this is the analogy I used is for us to have 100% visibility into pre-trip data means that we can take a corrective action on the front end for everything that's going on. So that was the chocolate peanut butter analogy, right? There's a really, really yeah. simplistic fit between Traxo and, and BTP. For Traxo, they were providing, they're providing great data 
And one of the things BTP provides for them is the ROI. Like, what do you do with all that data that comes in and says, I've got people here, I've got people there with, with BTP then, because we now can analyze that data and provide the corrective actions. There's your kind of readily available ROI uh, moving forward in your initial, like, hey, there's my cost savings. I get why we're now doing all this on the front end. So it was a very synergistic relationship for us. Appreciate you that. Know, we're, yeah. we're gonna be implementing uh, an integrated solution for a couple of companies coming up. And you know, this is a very, like, like with Saber for the last year or two, it's been a very collaborative process, right? And you know, this is, this is nobody has all the answers moving into something like this. So we're really excited to integrate companies with Traxo so that we can, you know, m measure the results and have this quantifiable savings that we're be able to, you know, being able to provide. Appreciate that response. Thank you. Any, anybody else want to add any color to that? Or you think he summed it up nicely? <laughs> I, I can just add to, from a buyer perspective, a, a corporate travel manager perspective, I can definitely see value um, in the Traxo uh, BTP partnership for those that are sort of the one man show, or even it's half of your job to do manage the entire travel program, to have that um, automation um, and the looking into all the data for you so you don't have to do it yourself. Yeah, I appreciate that, Francis. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we've got some really good questions coming in the Q&A. Um, so Anna Price has asked, how is BTP the same or different to competitors such as TripBam, HRS, and the hotel space specific? You're on mute, Bruce. Fernando, do you want to jump in here or do you want me to go? Well, Everybody's just... for me, so I can't tell what's happening. So. Yeah, go for it, Bruce. Go. Well, again, Anna, going back to the earlier question about how we differentiate ourselves, um, there is a view of the industry that we think supports everybody. Now, you have... And I'm not going to, I don't want to dive into specifics with other specific companies. Like if I think, start thinking about my competitive analysis, right? I'm not going to, I don't want to kind of um, reach when it comes to understanding other people's technology or product roadmap. But as far as I know, we are the only company that does as deep a dive as we're doing on the data and kind of treating the program as a, um, as a comprehensive uh as a, as a kind of a comprehensive set that we're trying to address. So not just about lowering the cost, say on the current hotel that you're booking, but maybe analyzing the market to see where you have a popular hotel and where you haven't met a volume threshold, but that if we drive the, with through data, if we kind of drive the response into that property with which you're so close to meeting a threshold, Right. And the only way you can tell that is if you have really got all the data in front of you and then you can start to move volume into a property that's going to be more beneficial to your program. So from that standpoint to the generation of all the RFPs working with hotels to kind of lower their costs and streamline operations so that they're it's a more favorable process for them as well. You know, that's that's kind of how we're carving ourselves out of the out of the kind of fray right now. Well, the, the questions are really pouring in now, so I appreciate that. Uh, uh, yeah. Anna, I, you've, got a, you've got a few here, Anna, and I'm gonna try to get to all of yours, but I wanna make sure that I get some other questions answered as well. So if you would like to oh, yes, interact with BTP, what's that? I was just real briefly, yes, we do include benchmarking data. Yeah, okay, awesome, awesome. Yeah, um, I just saw it pop up, so I wanted to jump in. Mm. Yeah, and I, I wanted to to let uh, Anna specifically know because she's got a few here that um, if you want to connect with the BTP guys, we'll provide a way to do so. Um, we finish up here. Uh, so I've got another question. Uh, it says what should what should be the hotel RFP strategy during this time? Any best practices? Well, let me uh, <clears throat> mention something. I think that. Uh, First of all, companies have to start opening their eyes into the details of their uh, uh, 
arrival to the new life, right? Okay, how am I arriving? Am I spending a lot of money? Am I spending, am I changing markets? Am I changing the type of hotels I'm going to, et cetera? So they have to start looking at the full visibility of what's going on every day, every day, every day, right? And then start covering their, their uh, preferred hotels, depending on how they are using them on a daily basis, but not just on historical data. Historical data basically shows you a good foundation of everything, but historical data is, is past. It's not very usable right now, right? You have to see the reality every day, every single day, the reality of your execution and the reality of the market itself. You know, uh, we also know that hotels have uh, limited resources as well, right? So we have to understand how to approach hotels, the better way for them give them an easier way to make a deal, not just waiting for an answer, no, an easier way. So that's the way to approach uh, this process right now, full visibility and understanding the resources that are available in both sides, suppliers and, and buyers, and also in the intermediaries, travel management companies. Full visibility is the name of the game, full visibility on a daily basis. I might just jump in also just to very specifically about, you know, hotel RFP strategy today. Yeah. First and foremost, I, I think, you know, as we're, as we're kind of getting back and volumes are starting to increase, I think from a strategic standpoint, your hotel RFP strategy should be continuous sourcing, right? You want to find somebody that's, or something that's helping you continuously source your your program so that you're not putting in a fixed rate and you're living with that for a year right and that's how the industry has worked in the past which is why we're now seeing this kind of move to dynamic rolling programs that make sure you're optimizing your program on a daily basis and then if you can optimize that program on a daily basis without you know really burdening yourselves with additional labor I think that that's the strategy for moving forward is find out how to continuously source. Um, we're seeing a lot more mo movement to dynamic rates, um, but the that that rolling program versus the static once a year procurement cycle, uh, that's the strategy I'd be trying to deploy. Yeah. Very good points. Um, no, another just, question yeah. from, uh, oh, sorry. Francis, I was just gonna add something quickly, yeah. Just to no, say. please. Um, the, with the current rates the way they are, for the most part, we have been able to secure um, those set rates that we had. Um, they've rolled over the last two years, and hoteliers have been giving us a dual-loaded dynamic rate so that the set rate acts as a ceiling, so you can't go above that, and then you, you also float with the dynamic rate. I don't know if... Uh, that's actually really good business for hoteliers and whether they're going to keep going with that after after maybe this year uh, or next year. Um, I, As a corporate travel manager, I would love to see that continue. So I would like to see a push from the corporation side to push the hoteliers to keep going with that strategy moving forward because I believe it provides the best of both worlds. Great, thank you. Yeah, and so we've got a question from uh, Henrik. He asks, "Is in your data that you collect today, do you have sustainable data included, or is that potentially coming later?" Yeah, that's a, that's a perfect segue. <laughs> one of the one of the things that we are doing is we are integrating uh, two key components into our RFP. One is finished and active today, and the next one, to Henrik's point, is about sustainability. So today, if you use a, a BTP automation kind of product and the RFP component of it, our RFPs are delivered with hotel health security screening, hotel security verification. So is your property you know, meeting cleanliness guidelines? Are you COVID-19 safe? So things that are much more around duty of care. And so that that gives some comfort level on the front end for a corporate travel manager around duty of care. And then the next component we're adding is sustainability. Our health security verification is with a company called ShareCare. It's a large health services organization that is doing um, health security screening for hotels around the world. Um, so we have a really nice partnership with them that 
We have integrated fully now the ability to request or require a health security screening on the front end. Uh, and on the hotel side, we're giving them the ability through right through our RFP and an API with ShareCare, the ability to sign up dynamically, meet the corporation's request for security verification, health security verification. And so having built that right into the process. And the next one on our product roadmap, which we should have complete in about 45 days is a sustainability uh, rating that will also be generated in the RFP. Very cool, very cool. Um, so this question I find very interesting um, because it, it does take into account the other section of our audience here today. So the question is, what is the supplier feedback to this technology been? Any feedback or thoughts from major hotel chains regarding this technology? Yeah, yeah. Um, I so talking to, and I I'm, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say, but talking to one of the biggest chains in the world, um, they, you know, they they have pain points as well, right? And you know, one of their pain points is that typical RFPs are delivered. It comes with a fee, right? They're having to pay X amount of dollars to get beat up on price, which they're always going to get, you know. They're always going to get beat up for price, but to have to pay to do that is a difficult thing to swallow. And then the complexity of either the GBTA form or other RFPs that are being delivered um, make it a resource intense process. Uh, so what hoteliers we're hearing really like about BTP and the way this works, let me just really kind of encapsulate this for you. When we deliver an RFP in the automated fashion, we, we have a call center that vets the recipient. So we know exactly where the RFP needs to go, whether that's a national account manager or localized with a revenue manager or sales manager. We vet that and we're building a database on hotel, a hotel contact database, which is actually a really important thing these days as resources have scattered all over the map inside hotels, as we all know. So then when we've vetted the recipient, we deliver the RFP, we give them a set of login credentials that brings them to a portal. There's no cost for the supplier in this case. They go to a portal where they see a very, very slick, streamlined interface that they can get through an RFP in about a minute to respond. What we also do when we're delivering that, which they really like, is we provide validating information from the corporation. So we show them the tra trailing 60, 90, 180 days, however it's configured, business that that corporation has provided for them. So we're, we're sending to the hotel validating information that this is a, a valid proposal that you need to respond to, and you don't have to go into your own PMS to find out how much business this corporation has driven for you over the last you know, given period of time. We send all that information to the hotel. So now we're delivering a, a lower cost, a streamlined operationally RFP, and an RFP that is simple enough to respond to that you can apply a lower labor rate to it. It doesn't have to be done by the revenue manager who, you know, in most cases has a lot of more, you know, pressing things on their plate. And in some cases they're, all, they're, they're delivering meals and doing room service. So, I, I mean, these guys are all, you know, multitasking and, and trying to um, kind of recover from this last year. And so anything we can do on the supplier side that lowers their costs, streamlines their ops, um, they're, they're really excited about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And interesting, uh, when you mentioned uh, delivering meals and providing room service, uh, there's a follow-up question. And they ask, how do negotiated amenities play into that the index? So is this technology specific focused on dollar savings, but the race, rate since amenities can't necessarily be calculated against the market on a daily basis? Well, it's a, it's a great question. And when we look at compliance or when we look at the value chain, the compliance chain, it starts out with channel, right? How do they book the how do they book their, their travel? Did it go through the approved channel? So the OBT or the TMC? Then we look at every other component in that value chain, and it goes from getting the right property to the right room type to the right rate code. 
and then we look at amenities. So we look at the negotiated rates, we look at what amenities were negotiated, and then we look for compliance to those amenities in the kind of overall, again, you know, uh, compliance chain. So it gets very granular and the corporation has the ability to configure. And when we onboard a, a company, we take them through their entire set of configurable parameters and they can do that as granular as they want to. So if they want to go down to Wi-Fi transfers, you know, breakfast and a fitness center, they can they can address all amenities in that compliance chain and configure how important those amenities are to their overall booking and compliance of. So I, I hope that answers your question, but we, we do look at amenities. I believe it does. Um, okay, so here's another question. Is there any additional functionality that BTP can track like hotel commission capture? Yes, yes. <laughs> there is. actually, yes. Uh, we, uh, we're actually working with a TMC today um, and we have a feed from their mid office that because we have expense data, we see what was booked, um, so what's commissionable, but we also see what was actually paid for. So in the case of um, XYZ Traveler, they may have made a reservation through the GDS for two nights, got to the property, extended their stay, so they have a 30% commission bump that they haven't, from the TMC standpoint, they weren't aware of because it happened on site and they don't typically have access to the expense data it's owned by the corporation. So when we see that, we can reconcile for the TMC the fact that they left one night's worth of commission on the table, right? And so we are providing for this particular TMC a recoverable commission report so that they can go back out and kind of achieve those that revenue. Um, it, it you know it, it's been iterated to us that. You know, 20 to 30 percent of hotel commissions for commissionable rates, obviously, are going undistributed. And that is a that is a big chunk of money that's being left on the table. I wonder if some of that could be because the booking didn't happen through the TMC. And I wonder if there's a way to get that data back. Anyway, mm, I don't I want to detract. This much. would be track zone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, OK, so another another follow up question here. Um, how does BTP address duty of care, such as employee safety at hotels? Anyone so, want to tackle that one? <laughs> yeah. Well, yes, yeah, so that's that's what I was talking about in the RFP when I was talking about health security verification, right? Um, you know, this there's there's only so much you can do through your RFP in requesting, you know, hotel security screening. Um, and really our kind of initial um, consideration of duty of care is along the lines of the, the health security verification, making sure properties are clean and well managed and maintained. Um, but that's kind of, that's just our initial tranche there. We, you know, we haven't, we haven't gone any deeper yet. Okay. Um, this question seems to be along the lines of um, the comparison. You know, earlier question was a follow up from Anna. So she says, do you offer audit services and reshopping services? Audit services, yes, because yeah. what we do is a daily audit of the program. Um, reshopping, our automate, we're not a booking tool. I've um, <laughs> been there, uh, but uh, our. Our, our automation along the booking um, is, you know, will work to deliver the booking, the rebooking request. So we basically, after we analyze the data, we say, here were some wrong room types, here were the bookings that were made without the rate code, the wrong property type, and we'll generate a, a nice streamlined little message to the appropriate party to take the rebook action. And whether that appropriate party is, Trip BAM or an OBT that you know we can integrate with, uh, we're happy to generate that. But we're not a we are not a booking tool, or you know, we are at some level a rate reshopping tool only because we're taking into consideration local market conditions versus your current negotiated rates. So we're auditing all that on the front end, but we don't do the rebook action. Got it. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, 
So you did follow up and say that you do include benchmarking. So can you add some color to that? So what sources are you using to benchmark? Yeah, I'll let Fernando take that. Well, basically the benchmark that we do is with all the clients that we have and also the uh, public market information on market conditions and market rates and all that. Uh, on the previous uh, question you asked about audits, well, we do audits every day, not just about if the rate is audit, if, if the rate is loaded or not, but also what rates are available based on the markets that we're approaching, that our clients are approaching. So we benchmark with the public rates and with the public information available. That's, that's basically what we do right now. Excellent. Thank you for that, Fernando. Um, so in closing, any other, uh, you know, Francis, I, I, I know we, a lot of the questions were addressed specifically for BTP and um, which I think is a good thing, you know, um, it, it, the, the number of questions that have come in and the types of questions uh, show that the audience is definitely interested in, in hearing about how and what you do. Uh, Francis, do you have anything you'd like to add as far as you, because you're sitting in the shoes of most of the people that are attending today. Um, any other thoughts, considerations, you know, questions you asked when you were kicking the tires before you went forward, anything that you think that, uh, you know, the other travel managers, travel buyers attending today might want to uh, think about or pay attention to? Uh, yeah, sure. I've got a couple of thoughts on that. So just going back to that previous question, um, just to add there that the, the rebooking action, we have that actually set up to come to us as the corporate travel team. So then we would reach out to the, the traveler and say, hey, we can re this can be rebooked. Um, or we, can, we could have had it set so it went directly to the traveler as well if we wanted to do that. So that's, that's a preference. And that's one of the great things about the BTP setup is the different aspects of customization that you can do. So when we started working together, we had some challenges with the data, but we looked at all of that together and said, okay, where, where are we going wrong with this? Work through all of that to make sure that the data was all gonna be accurately captured. And then you have all these options to then choose to send the corrective action, like I said, to the traveler, to us. We don't use a rebooking uh, rate shopping tool. So for obviously that is an option that you can use. The RFPs to the hotel, you can choose to send that uh, directly or you can have management of that yourself. Um, all of the different things that you can do where they can just be manual or automated depending on your preference, depending on your bandwidth. So it sounds like there's a, you know, essentially a dial, you know, uh, as much as you want to be involved or as automated as you want it to be, it's really yeah. up to the travel manager to choose. And you can choose different options for different things. It's not like you say, okay, I want everything. I want automation on this much automation or I want everything sent to me um, to then handle. It's like for one thing you can pick the automation, for the other thing you pick manual, for something else you pick. I'm not even interested in that part of it, so don't, don't do that at all. So it's not, it's an adjustable dial, not one that just stops at two clicks and that's all you get. Yeah, and, and we can, can work with, with Bruce and Fernando and change those parameters whenever we want to as well. Fantastic, fantastic. Any other parting comments or thoughts uh, you from the panelists here today? I, I would just, you know, I'd just like to kind of throw out that it's the most important thing for us is it's it's all about the data, right? You you really need to you really need to understand again, you know, benchmarking and everything. You need to understand where your program and the health of your program where it is today, and you can't do that without having really good visibility into your data. And then having that data presented to you in a way that's, you know, understandable, actionable, um, so that you can make corrections. And whether it's BTP or another company, um, it, it it's really, really important to get your arms around the information that's existing, but it's really hard to aggregate. Uh, and, you know, for us, the the continuous, continuous sourcing Part of the program is is critically important for any travel management um, organization when looking at their whether it's air car or hotel program moving forward because you need to you need to be flexible enough to change with the times because it will benefit you mm -hmm. in the long run for sure that's a very interesting point i mean we are we work in an environment where historically uh you know the gathering of data and the the 
pinning down of all of this information has been reliant upon human uh, duties and human interaction. And you know, one person, two people, five people can only do so much. Whereas you, yeah. know, you, in, you institute machine learning and technology into the environment, which is what we're hoping to bring to the audience in these, in these sessions. Um, it helps to make that job a lot easier for that human interaction, you know, that human person that's managing it. Um, you know, so that's our hope uh, for the audience here today is we're trying to bring tools and tips and technology that would complement your role and, and make things a lot easier. And I appreciate Francis, your uh, sharing of your insights and how you utilize the BTP technology specifically in your environment. Uh, Fernando, do you have any other parting thoughts or, or questions, comments, or anything you'd like to leave? Well, yeah, I would like to say that, um, you know, as Francis was saying, accuracy is you know, the name of the game, accuracy. Make sure that the data is accurate. That's very, very important. I mean, there's so many data fields around. There's so many changes in the market every day that accuracy has to be, you know, very, very the priority of number one. And then open for, uh, uh, clients uh, feedback that's very important as well you know because they see things we don't see you know they're out there so open to the feedback is very important as well get feedback from the clients accuracy yeah. and feedback and and data is the overarching theme isn't it i mean especially nowadays you know he who has the most data rules them all right it's uh, <laughs> that, that's that's the key yeah. um yeah, so I appreciate that feedback. Um, so Anna had one follow-up question for you guys. Um, are you going to be going to GBTA convention? Yeah, we'll be there. And I'll, I'll also say last last thing, and I don't want to tread on anybody here, but the, the last thing is, you know, what we've put together is a very low friction way to figure out if this thing is something that you, it works for you. There's, there's no cost to get, you know, to start with BTP. We run a 60 day pilot. We do everything in that 60 day pilot that we would do for a full, you know, full launch. So you can see if, you know, we'll run your data, your analytics, provide a bid list, all, you know, at no cost, just so people can see if there's really, the proof is in the pudding here. So mm -hmm. I'm just throwing that out there because it's a pretty low friction, simple way to vet uh, a, a technology company, so. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I um, I asked a question that I thought I was asking just to you guys before I shared it with the audience. And, um, you know, so I said, hey, I think this is just to you guys. I think actually everybody saw it, but I said, hey, what do you think about offering a free trial for, you know, anybody that's attending today? And, um, you know, so yeah. Fernando said yes. Um, you know, so I, 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 the cat's out of the bag on that, whether I wanted it to be or not. So everybody knows uh, you have the ability to, to, to try this in your own environment uh, free of charge. So let me ask you guys this, because we got a couple of questions that have come in uh, about seeing a demo, uh, seeing it work, uh, whether it's, you know, in the how Sabre uses it or how you know, a potential company might use it. How can somebody get in touch with you? What's the best way to be able to ask for a demo live? You, you can just email me directly or Fernando. We're Bruce or Fernando at btpautomation.com and, and contact us directly. We'll set up a, a live demonstration for you. And when we do demos, we use live data. We, we don't, it's not a static demo. We, we jump in and use the live data or you can go to btpautomation.com and follow the link for, uh, for a demo, either way. And we're, we're happy to have you come to us directly. It's a it's an open environment here. Excellent, excellent. Well, I, I just want to extend another thank you to the panelists for attending today. All three of you, you've added great value. We really appreciate it. Uh, we would not be able to do these webinars, obviously, if it weren't for you and your participation. So thank you so much for coming today. Um, and if you'd thank like you. to, if you if you've not had the opportunity for an overview of Traxo and you're curious to learn more about how we can bring real time booking, cancellation, and change data for your organization, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, we'll be putting the link uh, you see on this slide in the chat for your convenience to set up a time with one of us to speak with you direct, or feel free to reach out to me via the email you see here, and I'll be happy to get you connected. Thank you so much for everyone for attending. Uh, I encourage you to find a pool and grab a margarita, and I hope everyone has a great day. <laughs> Will Tate's <Thanks>. already there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Thank hey, you. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, really appreciate it. All right.